The social and emotional needs of children are very much on the minds of school administrators as they plan what things will look like in the fall. Their personal needs, just like their academic ones, will vary, with some kids adjusting fine and others will need more assistance. Carolee McGrath spoke with licensed psychologist Sarah Whitcomb, associate professor and director of the School of Psychology doctoral program in the UMass College of Education, to hear her thoughts on the best way to support students. I'm hearing that districts are pretty overwhelmed, <laughs> but they also are working really hard. I, the districts that I've talked to are um, working tire, tirelessly and really I feel like what's at the forefront of their minds are um, the social emotional health of students coming back as well as how to make up for missed academic time and how to plan for high quality instruction in these really unique circumstances. And when you talk about the missed academic work as well, I have to imagine that that adds anxiety um, and stress to everybody, certainly the students, but the teachers as well. But how do you help the students manage that as they try to uh, navigate this new normal for school? This experience with the pandemic is not unlike a traumatic event in many ways, right? It's a major disruption to the life of a child. And so what we know from, from the research and from practices um, that have been implemented before this time is that when there's a disruption like this, kids really are going to benefit most if they can rely on a predictable and structured environment. So thinking about predictable routines, thinking about um, clarity and the expectations for what the new normal is going to look like at school. Um, you know, everything from how do I enter the school? How do I, what are the rules around how I have to wear my mask? You know, all of those kind of little things that um, are, are bigger now. So there's some emphasis on predictability. And then I think there's also um, a, an emphasis on how do we reconnect with students? How do we really intentionally focus on building and maintaining healthy relationships? Um, and then I think there's a place for compassion for everybody involved, right? That, that this has been a major disruption and it's looked different for different kids. Some kids have done okay and are probably coming from this period of time where they had really warm, loving experiences in their home setting and others are not. And so understanding that the social and emotional behaviors are going to range um, and that we, can kind of put each, ourselves into each other's shoes and understand where, where kids and, and even adults are coming from coming out of this experience. And I think that that's an interesting point that, that some kids have bonded with their family, right? They, they've bonded with their brothers and sisters. They've been playing games maybe that they've never would have done. They're eating dinner together, you know, when normally life is so busy, but for other kids, it's been lonely, um, perhaps even um, risky, you know, to be away from school for that length of time. So that's got to be a lot for teachers to sort of manage as these kids are coming back. I think that's absolutely the case that, that for some kids, school has been their safe point always. And so I think teachers are well aware that um, that still remains true and um, Therefore, I think the emphasis on really kind of focusing those first six weeks of whatever this new normal is going to look like in school in the fall, um, that there's a focus on, on those pieces of predictability and safety. And then there's a focus on how do we reconnect and, and really understand, come from a place of understanding what our kids have been dealing with and, and why they might be behaving the way they are when they come back. I should point out that you're a licensed psychologist, but you're also a mother uh, dealing with this as, as everybody else has been. Um, what are your immediate thoughts as, as far as, as what kids you know, might be feeling? You talked a little bit about predictability and, and routine, but, but what comes to mind as, as you kind of live through this as well? You know, I think it could be kind of confusing for kids, even your kind of typically normally adjusted kids, right? This time is a little bit confusing because on the one hand, I could imagine that some kids are going to be 
thrilled, especially if we go back to school, um, which is a little unclear right now, but if we go back to school face to face at, at, in some way, shape or form, right? I think there's going to be kids who are really excited um, to see friends, to reconnect with old teachers, to meet new teachers, to have um, sort of this feeling a little feeling of more freedom than they maybe have have felt in this kind of time of quarantine. Um, and then at the same time, that same kid who's really excited to kind of get back out there is likely feeling nervous, uncertain, you know, as we all are when we go out to public places for the first time. I know when I, you know, first went out to the grocery store the first time and had to wear my mask for the first time, it's a little unsettling, right? And um, and so even though you might feel like and, and be able to trust that you're going into a, a safe environment where the adults are, are really thinking carefully about you and planning for you, um, it, it can be a little bit scary at the same time. So I think, you know, kids are going to come in with lots of mixed emotions, quite honestly. And social media has been, on the one hand, something very helpful during this time to keep people connected. On the other hand, we know how social media um, has its drawbacks. And certainly, if this didn't happen, I know the conversations are often, get your kids off the phone, get, get personal connections, eye-to-eye -eye contact. Uh, where do you think social media has fallen in all of this, and how can it be helpful um, and, and not, not a hindrance for kids? What I probably would tell parents is this before the before COVID-19 would be the same thing that I would say now, which is um, social media is not all bad. As you mentioned before, social media is a way to um, for for kids and adults and families to connect with one another, um, to maintain relationships with one another, um, to get idea, you know, interesting Pinterest ideas for new hobbies. Um, I think that's been I know in my family, really kind of a helpful uh, part of social media during this time. Um, but I think the same rule applies where there's got to be some limits around it or some boundaries around it so that um, as we probably have all experienced in one way or another, you can get sucked into social media and then you can get sucked into some of the negative aspects of social media, right? The, there's um, you know, a lot of anger that's put out there on social media. There's a lot of, um, of stories that reinforce the uncertainty we're all feeling. And so if we're kind of pulling in too much of that, that could be unhealthy too. And so I think there's this always can be a healthy balance between having some access to the positive aspects of social media and ha maintaining some healthy limits around it as well.